one of the huge joys of living in the boat on the hard while rebuilding the inside is you work and live in a work site. A little nervous. These are sardines. Never had a sardine before. While Hervey is painting and uh, glassing my closet floor, I've been doing the laundry with Pintash. <laughs> yes. We're gonna get some work done today. We're back on the boat. We're going to go walk to Constructora, see if they have wood glue, and get that floorboard installed in my closet so that I can have a closet again. I know. Uh, that was close enough to Spanish that I know what you said. <laughs> right in the face, goddammit. <laughs> so he's putting on the primer. And um, he already put a coat of primer and sanded, so now he's putting the second coat of primer and then he's gonna sand it again. So it's a lot of work to get it looking pristine, but I don't think Wisdom has ever looked as good as she's gonna look when he's done. We've noticed that they don't seem to use bunny suits or respirators here uh, for any kind of protection or tenting or anything, but um, it's not our place to question. You know, we're visitors here and we're just grateful that they're doing the work on our boat and it is looking beautiful, so it is what it is. <laughs> we got the bilge painted and the floor that goes under Maddie's closet that supports the air conditioning unit, I got that taken care of too. Because it was just a sheet of plywood that I had covered with polyurethane about four years ago. So I was in need of some sprucing up. So what we did is we covered it with epoxy and fiberglass and then we painted it with bilge coat as well. So that way it's a nice clean smooth surface that's easier to keep clean than plain plywood was. So now comes Maddie's favorite part putting it all back together. So, for the past while, we've had the bilge open and Maddie's closet completely emptied. So everything that was packed in there has been around the boat, everywhere. And one of the really important parts with this problem is the air conditioner unit. The only place that it fit to stay sort of out of the way was in the head, which made the head super easy to use. So now that we're going to put it all back together, we'll also get our head back.
I'm so excited. I put my clothes back. No, the closet is done. Yay. It's really hard to find uh, internet that's good enough to upload our videos. So we just came in here for a bit of a midnight snack so we could upload. Winter here in the Azores isn't so much cold and snowy like in the States, it's just wet. Always raining, every day. So that makes outside projects kind of slow. So now I'm going to be working on the heater. So yesterday I polished up the heater, got all the rust off of it, and now I'm going to rebuild the little, kind of like a pillow block that goes supporting the chimney when it comes out of the boat. So originally, like about six years ago, I built it out of mahogany. I bought seasoned mahogany, which is which means that it's dried out and it's done changing shape because when wood comes out of a tree, it's wet and as it dries, it shrinks. So when they sell it to you, it's supposed to be fully shrunk. It wasn't, <laughs> so it shrank a whole lot in like no time flat. So the wood split and was having all these issues. And I just kind of ignored it because it was close enough to working but when we were coming across the ocean, any wave that came over the deck found its way through those gaps and came right in the boat. So, I'm going to build it again, but instead of trying to do it again out of mahogany, I'm going to do it out of fiberglass. This o-ring is the exact dimension of the bottom of the chimney spout. So, the idea is we'll make a base out of the foam core that's behind me that's large enough to fit this, this o-ring and then with the o-ring on it we know that that's going to be a big enough square for the footprint. From there we're then going to make angled sides to kind of mimic the wood block that's currently on there. It does a lot of sunny raining here, and as a result, we get these gorgeous rainbows. We're here in the boat. Uh, it's like 1 a.m., and it's torrentially downpouring, which is not that uncommon for Tercera um, in November, but oh my gosh, the wind. The wind is insane. The boat is vibrating. It's a little scary. That's really unnerving. I am very excited about today because we have decided to not only refit the galley, but to refit the worst part of the boat, which is, in my opinion, the head. Lots of wasted space there, and we're starting today. Always bring our iPads in the dry bag in case it rains because you never know if it's just gonna start randomly downpouring here. <laughs> All right, so this is the current head with a composting toilet. This whole counter 
And all this awkward space back here is a lot of the problem because we just throw stuff back here. It's really hard to clean. And then these, these, we can't keep anything in here because these have no latches uh, and they don't open. And since we're not using that space anyway, obviously we don't need it. So what we can do is get rid of all this and then these are like shallow, these are shallow cabinets that we, if we get rid of these, we're going to have all this giant amount of space here for the shower. And then we can put the cabinets over here. The floor is disgusting. So we've got this like wooden kind of grate over top of it, which is awesome because it hides the nastiness that is underneath. But as a result, it's really hard to clean all that crud underneath and it gets gross. The shower is over here, behind the door here, and we're going to keep it that way, but we're going to replace the shower head and make it prettier. And this here... So I, I built that about six years ago when I really didn't know how to build things. So it was an attempt. The plastic was free, someone threw it out, and I got it out of a dumpster. And the wood is from Home Depot. It's red oak, which you actually shouldn't use in a boat because it'll rot. But if you treat it with enough varnish, six years later it'll still be fine. But still, it's not the best and we can make it a lot better and a lot easier to keep clean in the shower. And that is important to be there because it's covering the mast. Yeah, so all the mast, the electrical connections that come out of the mast all happen right inside that box, which used to be open, there was no cover, so you'd be showering next to live wires. Ah! Good design. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately the goal here is going to be to open it up clean it up, make it easier to clean, and just make it make a lot more sense. We've always wondered what's behind this black thing, why it's there. Ah. Big reveal! Huh. I, I guess it was just so that it was a nice smooth <laughs> edge to the sink. <laughs> the first of many. <laughs> Hold the ceiling up with your head, maybe? I knew that piece of wood was going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. You said it. Yeah, it is. All right, I'll take it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's finishing washers. Piece of wood, madam. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to see what's behind this? I'm a little nervous. Yeah, it's been here since I bought the boat. <laughs> Are the lights going to be in the way? They might, but they are not coming out right now. Okay. <laughs> the faucet's in the way. Oh, oh gee, of... really? Yeah. Huh. There Is this go. another Maddie I told you so moment? It might be, but I don't want it to be. <laughs> I don't want to take the faucet out yet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Is it making you seasick? No, it's just making me sick that you didn't take listen to me and take the bosses out first. <laughs> Alright. Take out the faucets. Take out the faucets. Okay, it really smells like fish in there. Oh. That's so sketchy. So, as Maddie said, I removed the faucets. Oh look! It works! <laughs> Yay! Ta -da! My oh my. We're really doing this. No turning back now. 
So now we've exposed all this. And we have a dirty little secret. So we have a composting toilet, but we didn't always have a composting toilet. And originally, this is what the boat had from way back when of direct discharge. And it's the, the loop for the anti-siphon loop. So when I switched from the illegal toilet it had to a composting toilet, I disconnected all the pipes and everything, but this guy was inside here and I'd have to take this out to get to it. So the easier thing I just did was I plugged up both sides. So this is still full of poop. What? Poop. 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 That is full of poop. Yep. That is disgusting. Yep. Was really disgusting is when I sealed it. Oh my god. That was like ah, ugh, quick and gross. like the hole and oh. bleach. So foul. So that and then these are our chain plates. And this was the, the big reason I wanted to tear apart the gap the head is because I couldn't get to them to check them. There's a tiny little hole that I could look through and I could see one of them and it was like, well, it looks ish. They're very rusty, so we're gonna be working on that. Minor setback. So every single screw that holds this thing in has epoxy right in the screw head. So there is no way we're going to be able to unscrew this thing and take it out. Uh, so that's going to be fun. So we're going to cut it out. It's loud. It'll be fun. This little tiny Solnax that I have from Dremel, it it can't do this. This is way beyond what it can do. So the issue is since all the screw heads inside have epoxy covering them, I'm hoping that maybe under the fire the Formica there will be clean screw heads, hopefully, and then we'll be able to unscrew it from that side. And then all we have to do is just cut the cleats off. We don't have to, you know, this. <laughs> Yes, this looks like an excellent stopping point. So we're gonna go get some dinner, and then we're gonna come back, and then we're gonna do some more. We're going to a cheese factory, and cheese is my favorite thing in the world. So we have all the wood in the bathroom torn apart. No. Oh yes, you should. You're so sweet. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.